All right, it's been a crazy day already. The brand new MacBooks have been released. I completed an unboxing video of my 16 inch MacBook Pro already. I have a 14 inch MacBook Pro sitting in a box over there. I've done the AirPods third generation. And now, you know what? I wanna do some benchmarks. I wanna know, is this 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Max processor fast? Hey, I'm Jerry. And yes, it is time to get some benchmarks on this 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max processor. I'm really excited to do a couple of initial tests and see what kind of results we get compared to the previous M1 Pro MacBooks and the previous 16 inch MacBook Pro and also the 24 and 27 inch iMac. So let me just start off by saying that this is the base high tier, if that's a thing, of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is when you go to Apple's website and you go to order and you click on 16 inch, there's three of them listed as default configuration options. This is the highest of those three default configurations. It's the M1 Max processor with 10 CPU cores, 32 GPU cores, 32 gigabytes RAM, and one terabyte of storage. And of course, these MacBooks are more about just the processor, right? They also have an amazing new Pro Display XDR display with a notch, that's a feature. They have a brand new six speaker system with two sets of force canceling woofers. They have all of these great ports on the side, including three Thunderbolt 4 ports. You get a headphone jack, you get HDMI, and you get an SD card reader, along with the return of MagSafe. And all of this is in a redesigned chassis that is very similar to MacBooks that we had about 10 years ago, which is actually pretty good because you know what they aren't? They aren't thin and light laptops because they are pro laptops. They are being built as pro laptops, which requires bigger chassis for better thermal management. And I think we got it but I haven't done the test yet. So you know what? Let's just get started. All right, so since this is the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max, we are actually going to do one other thing on this so that we can see the best possible performance. We're gonna go to system preferences. We're gonna go to battery. We're gonna go to power adapter and we're gonna change this energy mode from automatic to high power. That should give us the absolute peak performance that we can get from this laptop without the laptop worrying about how loud the fans are. It can get rid of the heat as fast as possible to keep the performance as high as possible. I also have this basic infrared heat gun that can help us look at the chassis temperatures as we go along in our tests. So as you can see, this computer has been sitting idle for a little while. There's not a whole lot of things happening. So let's get a baseline of the temperature. And it looks like about 85.2 degrees Fahrenheit or 29.6 degrees Celsius on the top of the laptop. And let's see, roughly the same on the bottom of the laptop. So let's just go ahead and start with a simple basic disk speed test. So let's bring up Blackmagic and see what kind of performance we get on the internal SSD. And holy cow, we are seeing speeds over 5,000 megabytes per second, 5.8 gigabytes per second on the right and 5.2 gigabytes on the read. That is insane. That is almost double what we've been seeing on previous Macs. So compared to the most recent Mac released, which was the 2021 24 inch iMac, that had a read and write of about 2,900 megabytes per second. The previous MacBook Pro 13 inch with the M1 had a write speed of 3,100 and a read speed of 2,700. The previous 16 inch MacBook Pro with the i9 had a read and write speed of about 2,900. So this new MacBook Pro M1 Max blows those out of the water in just internal SSD speed tests. All right, now off to the tried and true Geekbench test. Yes, Geekbench 5, we're gonna check single core, multi-core, and metal. So we're running the latest Geekbench test and we'll go ahead and start right now. So you can see that we're almost all the way through the test now, yet, we haven't been pegging out the CPU or any of the cores at all during this whole test. And there we go, we're getting a Geekbench score of 1783 for single core and 12629 for multi-core. Now that was really close to the MacBook Pro 13 with the M1 at 1736 and the MacBook Air at 1732 for single core. And of course the 2021 iMac at 1747, which destroys the 2020 i7 iMac at 1242. But in multi-core, the M1 Max absolutely destroyed the MacBook Pro M1, which got 76.53, and the 2020 iMac i7, which got 83.23. And that's such a big jump in performance, multi-core performance in just over a year 
to go from seven plus thousand to 12 plus thousand. That's crazy. All right, let's go ahead and check Geekbench Compute now and we'll use Metal for the test and we'll run that benchmark. And I think what we're gonna find is that these Geekbench tests just don't run long enough to fully stress out the computer because we're still running around the same temperature. So 86.1 degrees Fahrenheit or 30.1 degrees Celsius. And Geekbench Metal Score comes out at 65, Three, three, eight. <laughs> oh man, so, well, that absolutely destroys all previous benchmarks that I've done for metal tests. So my previous record holder was my 2020 iMac with the 5500 XT, the Radeon Pro 5500 XT, which got 44,127. Below that with the i5 iMac, which had the Radeon Pro 5300, that got 37,317. And this blew everything out of the water, including the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro, which got 21,876. So essentially three times faster in metal GPU performance. Okay, so now we're gonna move over to Cinebench R23. Now this test should run for 10 minutes, which should give the computer enough time to build up some heat inside and hopefully we'll be able to see a temperature increase or, or maybe not. Maybe this computer can do a really good job of keeping the temperature low and the fans not too loud. Okay, we're gonna start with the CPU single core speed. So that's gonna run for about 10 minutes. Okay, so we just finished up here and we got a single core score of 1529, which is just about the same as the highest score on here with the Core i7, 11 Gen, 1165G7. That puts it just a little bit higher than the 24 inch M1 iMac with 16 gigs of RAM, which got 1506 and a bit higher than the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro with i9, which got 1140. And temperature wise, this thing barely budged. It went up to 33.8 degrees Celsius or 92.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and start the multi-core test now. And maybe we'll get this computer to heat up just a little bit. Okay, so we are halfway through the Cinebench multi-core test and we are finally maxing out all of the cores. And there is some heat coming off of this thing. So let's see what we got heat wise. So right now on the top, we got about 40.7 degrees Celsius or 105.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is getting warm. And on the bottom, let's see what the bottom looks like in case you have this thing on your lap. We're about 92 degrees Fahrenheit or 34.9 degrees Celsius. So this thing is speeding up. The multi-core test is actually doing uh, a little bit of work on here. It's actually pushing this MacBook and let's see if the fans are on. The fans are finally spinning at 1700 and 1800 RPM. But you know what? They're pretty much silent. I can't hear them at all. I really gotta put my ear down and no, I still can't hear them. I think I hear my fans from my lights more than I hear anything coming from the MacBook. All right, so the score we got from multi-core is 12,336, and we're at 102.5 degrees Fahrenheit or 39.2 degrees Celsius. So the temperature stayed right around the same or 40.3 degrees Celsius. So depending on where you're at, there might be a slight difference. Underneath, we're probably running a little bit less, I would imagine. So 34.8 degrees Celsius or 94.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is gonna be a little warm on your lap if you're running this thing to the max, but it shouldn't be too bad. You shouldn't probably toast your legs or anything. But the score of 12,336 is at least 10% higher than the 2020 i7 iMac, which got 11,046. And then there's the 24 inch M1 iMac, which got 7,792. So all in all, about a 10% jump from the 2020 i7 desktop iMac to this new MacBook Pro with M1 Max chip. All right, so now we can do some mixed tests with the CPU and the GPU. So let's start off with Final Cut Pro. Okay, so this was my iPhone 12 Pro unboxing video from 2020. And this has some clips that are multi-cam clips shot with iPhones. And so it is 4K variable frame rate, 30 frames per second. And so let's just see how this timeline feels. So if we just hit play, looks like it starts playing right away, no stutter. I can play and pause. I can jump around between the timeline and it all works just like you would expect. 
no issues at all. All right, so what if we just start moving some things around for fun and, yep, no performance issues. It can absolutely handle Final Cut Pro. Again, this is a couple of 4K clips, 30 frames per second, but variable frame rate because they were shot with iPhones. And it's got a couple of different audio tracks down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to export this guy and we're gonna use the same settings that I've used to test other computers. We're going to export. And this is gonna be set to 4K faster in code. And so let me get my phone ready and we'll start the clock. All right, so we're just gonna export it locally to the built-in SSD in three, two, one, start. Okay, so we are down to about 10%. We are about three and a half minutes in. We are not stressing the computer or the GPU all that much, which is a bit surprising. And again, completely silent. There's nothing happening on the back end. There's no heat coming up from this thing. It, I guess the fans are on at 1500 and 1600 RPM, but essentially making no noise. All right, there we go. Almost four minutes flat. Now that means nothing to you until I tell you what the other scores are. But again, this thing is running extremely cool for what you're doing. 96.9 degrees Fahrenheit, 36.1 degrees Celsius. And the closest computer to this 16 inch M1 Max MacBook was the 24 inch iMac with the M1, which got a time of six minutes and 24 seconds. What? Like that is crazy from a laptop. And it's even crazier compared to the previous 16 inch MacBook Pro with an i9 processor, which got seven minutes and 26 seconds. Two minutes may not sound like a long time and it's probably not overall a huge amount of time for me, but if somebody is doing this day in and day out over and over and over, this is a huge time saver. That is a big difference going from seven minutes, 26 seconds down to just four minutes. So let's check out LumaFusion. All right, so same thing here with LumaFusion. I have an older video that I shot with iPhones and it's got a number of different layers and audio tracks and video tracks. And it looks like the timeline is working pretty well. Let's just hit play. And it looks like there's a bit of a delay between when I hit the keyboard to play and it's starting to play. And then when I hit the keyboard to stop and it's stopping. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but there's just a little bit of a lag that may or may not have to do with just LumaFusion running on the MacBooks with Apple Silicon. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to go back and test my other computers again. So there is just a little bit of a, a lag there. So let's see about moving things around. Yep, so we can move things around. Performance should be pretty good overall editing with LumaFusion on this MacBook. So same thing here, we're going to start and export and we'll save it to a movie. We'll choose files. And this is going to be 4K. This is gonna be the 150 megabit per second version, H.264. Uh, iPad mouse settings, sure. And let's see, we'll start the timer now. All right, so we're halfway through the LumaFusion export. Let's just check temperatures real quick. We're at 33.1 degrees Celsius or 91.5 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see that we're actually using more GPU with LumaFusion than we were with Final Cut Pro, which is interesting and quite a bit less CPU overall. All right, so this just ended three minutes and 16 seconds. The temperature down here is about 93.5 degrees Fahrenheit or 34.2 Celsius. We used quite a bit of GPU, not a whole lot of CPU, but three minutes and 16 seconds versus the M1 MacBook Pro, which was four minutes and 42 seconds, which again is a pretty big savings in time overall if you're doing this day in and day out. Now, of course, I can't check this against the previous i9 MacBook Pro because LumaFusion just won't run on it. It needs Apple Silicon. So big change there. Okay, and so the last test I'm going to run is going to be the Unigen Heaven test, which does run under Rosetta. It has not been optimized for Apple Silicon yet. So we're gonna run a custom settings, well, essentially the extreme settings, but we're gonna change the anti-aliasing to 4X so it'll actually run on here correctly. And we're gonna go ahead and hit run, and then we'll give it a second, and then we'll go ahead and click to start the benchmark. Okay, and starting the benchmark now. 
So we're in the middle of this benchmark and you can see that the graphics is being hit pretty hard. The CPU, not so much. And again, fans are pretty much dead silent. I don't even know if they're on or not. At this point, it looks like they are on at 1600 and 1700 RPMs, but you can't hear them at all. And this thing looks super smooth. Right now, the running frames per second is 66. This thing looks really good. Okay, and there we are. We got 67.2 frames per second and a score of 1692. And I just gotta say that that is the fastest score that I have gotten personally with this benchmark. So before we look at the other scores, let's look at the temperature down here. So we're looking at 41.3 degrees Celsius or 106.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So the laptop did heat up a bit during this test. It really used the graphics as much as it could on this Unigen Heaven benchmark. Now, 67.2 versus 63.4 on the 2020 iMac with the Radeon Pro 5500 XT. And the 16 inch MacBook Pro got a score, an overall score of 1692 versus 1597 on the 2020 iMac. So this computer is absolutely the fastest computer that I have personally used. That's not a server running Xeons in a data center. And it's pretty amazing and crazy that this power is coming from a laptop. So I'm super excited to spend some more time with it over the next few days and weeks and see what else we can actually do with this thing. But the fact that we can get this level of performance out of a laptop that stays relatively cool and absolutely silent, like the fan didn't turn on on any of these tests today, is mind blowing. So if you're interested in seeing more of this laptop in a future video or any of the other MacBooks with M1 Pro or M1 Max chips, definitely hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this video and I'll see you next time.